and partnership with the industry will be reoriented to promote continuous skilling avenues, sustainability and employment, empl employability. The national skill qualification framework will be aligned with dynamic industry needs. Digital ecosystem for skilling and livelihood, the Desh Stack e-portal, will be launched. This aims to empower citizens to skill, reskill, or upskill through online training. It will also provide API-based trusted skill credentials, payment and discovery layers to find relevant jobs and entrepreneurial opportunities. Startups will be promoted to facilitate drone shakti through varied applications and for drone as a service. In select ITIs in all states, the required courses for skilling will be started. Due to the pandemic-induced closure of schools, our children, particularly in the rural areas and those from scheduled castes and scheduled tribes and other weaker sections, have lost almost two years of formal education. Mostly, these are children in government schools. We recognize the need to impart supplementary teaching and, build, and to build a resilient mechanism for education delivery. For this purpose, one class, one TV channel, program of PME Vidya will be expanded from 12 to 200 TV channels. This will enable all states to provide supplementary education in regional languages for classes 1, and 1 to 12. High quality e-content in all spoken languages will be developed for delivery via internet, mobile phones, TV and through radio and digital, through digital teachers. A competitive mechanism for development of quality e-content by the teachers will be set up to empower and equip them with digital tools of teaching and facilitate better learning outcomes. A digital university will be established to provide access to students across the country for world-class quality universal education with personalized learning experience at their doorsteps. This will be made available in different Indian languages and ICT formats. The university will be built on a networked hub and spoke model with the hub building cutting edge ICT expertise. The, be the best public universities and institutions in the country will collaborate as a network of hub and spoke. An open platform for the national digital health ecosystem will be rolled out. It will consist of digital registries of health providers and health facilities, unique health identity, consent framework with and universal access to health facilities. The pandemic has accentuated mental health problems in people of all ages. To better the access to quality mental health counseling and care services, a national tele-mental health program will be launched. This will include a network of 23 tele-mental health centers of excellence, with NIMHANS being the nodal center, and International Institute of Information Technology, Bangalore, Triple IT Bangalore, providing technology support. Recognizing the importance of Nari Shakti as a harbinger of our bright future and for women led development during the Amritkal. Our government has comprehensively revamped the schemes of the Ministry of Women and Child De Development. Accordingly, three schemes, namely Mission Shakti, Mission Vatsalya, Saksham Anganwadi and Portion 2.0 were launched recently. 
to provide integrated benefits to women and children. Saksham Anganwadis are a new generation Anganwadis that have better infrastructure and audio-visual aids. Powered by clean energy and providing improved environment for early childhood development. Two lakh Anganwadis will be upgraded under this scheme. Current coverage of Har Ghar Nal Se Jal is 8.7 crores. Of this, 5.5 crore households were provided tap water in last two years itself. Allocation of 60,000 crores of rupees has been made with an aim to cover 3.8 crore households in 2022 and 23. In 22-23, 80 lakh houses will be completed for the identified eligible beneficiaries of the PM Avas Yojana, both rural and urban. 48,000 crores is allotted for this purpose. The central government will work with the state governments for reduction of time required for all land and construction related approvals, for promoting affordable housing for middle class and for the economically weaker sections in urban areas. We shall also work with the financial sector regulators to expand access to capital along with reduction in cost of intermediaries. A new scheme, Prime, Minister Development, Prime Minister's Development Initiative for the Northeast, will be implemented through the Northeastern Council. It will fund infrastructure in the spirit of PM Gati Shakti and social development projects based on felt needs of the Northeast. This will enable livelihood activities for youth and women, filling the gaps in various sectors. It will not be a substitute for existing central or state schemes. While the central ministries may also post their candidate projects, priority will be given to those posed by the states. An initial allocation of 1,500 crores of rupees will be made and the initial list of projects is given in Annexure 1 of my speech. Our vision to improve the quality of life of citizens in the most backward districts of the country through aspirational districts program has been translated into reality in a very short span of time. 95% of those 112 districts have made significant progress in key sectors such as health, nutrition, financial inclusion and basic infrastructure. They have surpassed even some of the state average values. However, in those districts, some blocks continue to lag. In 22-23, the program will focus on such blocks in those districts. Border villages will, with sparse population, limited connectivity and infrastructure often get left out from the development gains. Such villages on the northern border will be covered under a new Vibrant Villages program. The activities will include construction of village infrastructure, housing, tourist centers, road connectivity, provisioning of decentralized renewable energy, direct to home access for Doordarshan and educational channels and support for their livelihood generation. Additional funding for these activities will be provided. Existing schemes will be converged. We will define their outcomes and monitor them on a constant basis. In 2022, 100 per cent of 1.5 lakh post offices will come on the core banking system, enabling financial inclusion 
and access to accounts through net banking, mobile banking, ATMs, and also provide online transfer of funds between post office accounts and bank accounts. This will be helpful, especially for farmers and senior citizens in rural areas, enabling interoperability and financial inclusion. Honorable Speaker, sir, in recent years, digital banking, digital payments, and fintech innovations have grown at a rapid pace in the country. Government is continuously encouraging these sectors to ensure that the benefits of digital banking reach every new nook and corner of the country in a consumer-friendly manner. Taking forward this agenda and to mark 75 years of our independence, it is proposed to set up 75 digital banking units in 75 districts of the country by scheduled commercial banks. The financial support for digital payment ecosystem announced in the previous budget will continue in 22-23 as well. This will encourage further adoption of digital payments. There will also be a focus to promote use of payment platforms that are economical and user-friendly. So I move to the next priority. In recent years, over 25,000 compliances were reduced and nearly 1,500 union laws were repealed. This is the result of our government's strong commitment for minimum government and maximum governance. 1,486 union laws were repealed. Our trust in the public and ease of doing business is what is highlighted here, sir. For the Amrit Kal, the next phase of ease of doing business, ease of doing business 2.0 and ease of living will be launched. In our endeavor to improve productive efficiency of capital and human resources, we will follow the idea of trust-based governance. The new phase will be guided by an active involvement of the states, digitization of manual processes and interventions, integration of the central and state level systems through IT bridges, a single point access for all citizen-centric services, and standardization and removal of overlapping compliances, crowdsourcing of suggestions and ground-level assessment of the impact with active involvement of citizens and businesses will be encouraged. A single window portal, Parivesh, for all green clearances was launched in 2018. It has been instrumental in reducing the time required for approvals significantly. The scope of this portal will be expanded to provide information to the applicants based on location of units, information about specific approvals will be provided. It will be, it will enable application for all four approvals. Latest updates or Taja Tareem Khabro ke liye TV One India Live ko subscribe kijiye और नोटिफिकेशन पाने के लिए बेल आइकॉन को दबाना मत